Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got a HP 15BC here that has no power, does not turn on, does not have any signs of life on it. Um, and uh, I've just taken the back cover off just to do some initial checks. And I was like, oh, let's turn on the cameras for this one, see if we get something interesting. Um, so uh, we're going to start going over the diagnostics on this, on how we can approach this. No idea if it's going to be fixable or not, but at the very least I can show you the basics of how to start approaching a total no power situation in a laptop. So uh, let's get into it. Today's episode is brought to you by me and the other content that I also create. If you weren't aware, I stream games over on my Twitch channel on Thursday and Sunday evenings at 7pm UK time. And I've also got a tech podcast that I run with my friend Caradog, which is over on the second channel. And we do that on Saturdays at 3.45 UK time. Links are down in the description below. Right, so I've already got the back cover off as you can see. I've disconnected the battery before we start so we can start taking measurements. And the first thing I want to do is uh, let's get the multimeter turned on in resistance mode. We just want to start taking some very basic checks to look for very obvious short circuits, which is the most likely thing you're going to find uh, in a laptop that doesn't power up. So we're going to start off from the DC jack where the charger plugs in, which is down here. So let's uh, take a closer look at that area so we can see what's going on down there. So our DC jack is under this bit of metal hinge here and it plugs in underneath the board. You can just see there, there's where the plug for the DC jack goes in. And uh, that's going to, um, the first thing that's going to happen is we've got the red lines there. Those are going to come up here at these vias and they're going to go into these MOSFETs here. That's going to be our DC in MOSFETs, um, sometimes known as an inrush limiter um, on MacBooks. And let's try and just move these wireless antennas out the way a little bit. Um, now this is a slightly different configuration. I don't know if this is typical, but um, um, these are two MOSFETs in parallel. Um, so the, the power comes in, they go through, through these two MOSFETs and go out into the rest of the laptop. Normally I would expect to find a pair of MOSFETs like this in series, um, but on these ones apparently they're parallel. And you can see that because the traces go up to the bottom of both of them and over to the top of both of them. Normally I'd expect it to go in one, then through the other one. But yeah, doesn't particularly matter. At any rate, this is where we're going to start measuring. So I'm going to put my black probe on any screw hole as a ground. And I'm going to stick my red probe just on the top of these um, MOSFETs here. And we're just going to see what we get. And the multimeter is showing mega ohms, 1.3 mega ohms. So that's a lot. That's fine. Um, so this means that we don't have a short in the DC jack. And it also means that the TVS diode, this guy here, which protects us against um, static shocks, gross over voltage, that kind of thing. This guy's also going to be okay. Um, if we saw a short circuit here, this would be my primary suspect. However, this guy is fine, and apparently there's no short circuit in the actual DC jack. So let's then check the output of that. So down here, where they're going out of these DC MOSFETs, We've also got 1.08 mega ohms. So again, there's no direct short at the main, uh, at the output from the DC circuit. So, okay, that's fine. So the next thing I want to do is look around the secondary power supplies in the laptop. So secondary power supplies are going to be uh, on or close to any large inductors we can see. So these gray squares, there's one here, there's one, there's a row of them here, there's, they're up here as well. The, all these gray squares are secondary power supplies in the system that are dropping the main power rail down to lower voltages for other stuff. And all of those are most likely going to be deriving that power from the main power rail. So we can pick any one of them. I'm going to pick this one because it's right in the middle and easy to see. Um, we can pick any one of these and have a look to see if its input or output is shorted. So let's just swing in for a closer look above those fans. So here is a secondary power supply and we can see we've got an inductor, we've got two MOSFETs and we've got a bunch of capacitors all nearby. This is going up to, let's see, looks like that's going up to the display connector. 
So this is probably power to the backlight rail uh, would be my guess. That's going to be our backlight power rail. But again, these are big fat traces. So we know that there's going to be main power there somewhere. So um, what's ground and what isn't? Well, it's fairly easy to tell because um, this lower trace here, this goes down to a screw hole. So we know that this is supposed to be ground. And this trace actually goes all the way around the entire outer edge of the motherboard as just a guard trace around the entire motherboard. So we can easily tell that that is ground. So this tells us that this guy is going to be the low side MOSFET and that's going to be the high side MOSFET. So that means this will be main power. So let's see if that is shorted. So again, I'll put my black probe on a screw hole. And let's just have a look. So what about, uh, well, we'll go into this capacitor because it's nice and big. And that is shorted. That's 0.3 ohms. So that's very shorted. And we'll just check the other side of it to confirm that that is indeed ground. And of course it is. That's also 0.3 ohms. So again, that's just resistance in my probing and stuff like that. Right, so there is a short circuit in this laptop. Um, so if we look around elsewhere, we can probably find that somewhere else. Let's go. Let's take a wander down here nearer to um, the GPU. So we've got um, we've got a GPU down here. There's another big power rail. Um, so not not sure what this is powering. It doesn't matter, but we can check the input for this and see if that's shorted. So black probe onto a screw hole, and we've got. Let's see. We've got capacitors here. These capacitors, one side is going to be ground, the other side is going to be um, um, uh, power. So let's just check one side. That's probably going to be the ground side because it's away from the MOSFET. And yet we can see that, that is that has no resistance to ground, so it is ground. And the other side of it, whoops, fell off. The other side of it, again, we're seeing 0.3 ohms, so same short circuit. So it looks like our main power rail is, is shorted to ground. But that makes me a little bit confused because I thought that whatever's coming out of the DC MOSFETs would be our main power rail. So this must go somewhere else before it turns into the main power rail. And that is what happens um, with a lot of laptops these days. There are some laptops where the DC MOSFETs will then go to another power supply, which then generates the main power rail. And there are some where the output from the DC MOSFETs is your main power rail. I must make a video that goes into more detail on this because there is documentation that explains this. But it's a, that's, a, that's a, uh, a video essay for another day. Um, however, in the meantime, we have found a short on the main power rail here. So what we need to do is we need to get this motherboard out to get any more information. So uh, let's take the uh, um, let's take the heatsink and fans out, uh, take the SSD out, take the battery out, unplug everything, get the motherboard out of this laptop. hair raising on the bottom of the board all right so here's our spare board and now the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out where the mount main power rail starts so let's just see if we can trace um, our DC input to where the main power rail is created so if we come across to the close up again so there were our DC in MOSFETs and those come down here, there's a bunch of vias going into the board there. It also goes along here to some more vias there. And if we flip the board over and have a look at the other side, there's the other side of those vias, and there's the other bundle, but this trace doesn't go anywhere. So what this tells me is that um, this power is going onto an internal power uh, plane inside the motherboard. So that's not going to help us out very much. So what we'll do instead is we'll go to where I'm expecting to find the main power rail and then we'll see if it connects back to where we know that the power is coming from. So the next place we're likely to find it is over near the battery connector over here. So 
Um, over at the battery connector itself, there's not a lot going on on top of the board here because we've got some data lines coming out to I.O. boards. We've got fan connectors and we've got the display connector. Um, so there's no room for, for there to be a lot of power there. Although that much being said, we can see that there's power coming off of the battery into this area. So actually, I was wrong about this guy. This guy is actually our battery charger. If we look at the back of the board where the battery connector is though, we've got more big MOSFETs and more fuses and current sense resistors and stuff like that. So this is definitely where we want to be. This big fat trace going across the board, that is going to be the main power rail because that's just an artery feeding the rest of the board with power. So this is definitely the guy that's shorted and like, <clears throat> no surprises, but we'll confirm that if I just switch on the multimeter. Let's just go black probe ground and onto that current sense resistor. And in a surprise to no one, there we've got a short circuit there. It's a little bit high. That's just probing though. So yeah, that's our guy. Um, and if we go to the underside of these MOSFETs, Let's see, let's try, so the output will be shorted because that's our main power rail. There we go, there's our, there's our short. And so the input, so that one is not shorted, that's mega ohms. And what about this guy up here? So that trace is coming around from up here. That guy's also not shorted. Now that one is 1.07 meg ohms, which is exactly what we found at the DC jack. So this is probably the DC input, which means this guy is pro possibly power coming in from the battery, would be my guess. Which is why it had such massive impedance on it, uh, or resistance on it, because there's no battery connected. Um, cool, so this is the start of our main power rail and this line is shorted. So there's something on the main power rail that is shorted to ground. So how do we figure out what is shorted? Well, um, what we can do and what I think I'm going to do is go straight to power injection. Um, but before we do that, we need to check a few things. We need to make sure that it's safe to do power injection. I'm going to do a visual inspection of the board first and make sure that I can't find anything that is very blatantly exploded. I've not seen anything on my on a quick visual inspection, but I've not looked closely yet. Uh, let's just pop that out while we're here, just in case. There's nothing under there. Fine. Um, then we also need to make sure that we're not shorted through our GPU, CPU, or PCH. Um, so let's do some checks for those. Now, um, if we check the resistance at the VRMs for the GPU and CPU, we should find that those do not match our short circuit. So firstly, our short circuit is at, let's get a good reading on that over at one of those shorted capacitors we found earlier. Uh, it's about 0.3 to 0.5 ohms is what we found. Uh, so let's check the GPU. This is going to be a really, really low. Oh, it's actually higher than I expected, 2.8 ohms. I was expecting lower than that. The important thing is, though, it's not the sh same as our short circuit. That's completely different. So we're not shorted through the GPU. Um, so what about the CPU? Now, this guy's going to have several power rails going into it. Actually, there's an extra one for the GPU there. Let's just check him just for funsies. Yeah, 140 ohms, no fear. The CPU has multiple VRMs going into it, and these are staged VRMs. So um, there'll be a bunch of them that are connected together, but A, there's a couple of rails going into here, and also some of the VRMs may be separated out, because in order to do for power saving, um, you'll have some of the VRMs that don't always run. The board can shut down certain VRMs to reduce power in low power situations. So let's just go down all of these inductors and just see if we find anything. So 10 ohms, that's no problem at all. 4.2 ohms, that's about, you know, three or four ohms is what I'd expect to see going through a CPU. These are probably gonna be the same because looking at the board, you can see that these traces are linked. So four, 
4 and 30. Cool, no problem at all. So we don't have any issues going through any of the major silicon. Uh, our PCH, I believe this guy is powered off of um, the 3.3 volt rail. I'm not sure where that is on this one. Going to have a quick look around some of these other ones. I'm just going to quickly buzz out these other inductors just to see if we see anything screamingly wrong. Killer ohms. Sixty ohms, not a short. Killer ohms. There'll be some expected resistances for some of these rails for sixty, which I'm not sure what they are off the top of my head. But again, we're looking for something that's catastrophically low, seventy-six ohms. So again, not a dead short. Um, so if the main power rail was shorted to ground through a secondary power supply like the 5 volt rail or the 3.3 volt rail or through a VRM or something like that we would see another shorted inductor somewhere or that's what I'd expect to see anyway. So by doing this quick test we've ascertained that we're probably not shorted through any major silicon uh, like the CPU, GPU, PCH and so on. So that means if I inject 1 volt onto the main power rail to see what heats up I'm not in danger of putting power directly into these chips and risking further damage. So uh, let's do our visual inspection of the board to see if we can see anything that's visually damaged. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and go to power injection, I think. So tour of the board. I'm looking for groups of capacitors. So we're looking for these guys. We're looking for something that's got a crack in it or is just visibly not happy. Discoloration is very hit and miss. It's really not a clear indicator. So I'm just going to pan across the whole board now. This will take a while, so I'm probably going to fast forward through this bit. Right, well, I've not found anything that looks screamingly obvious to me. There are a couple of uh, capacitors that had, like, you know, a spot on them or something like that that I took a closer look at, but I didn't see any cause for concern with any of them, um, which doesn't mean that it's not a capacitor. It probably is, but there's no, there's no, there's none of them that have visible cracks in that I could see at any rate. Uh, knowing my luck, when we do find something, it will have a crack in it, um, and we'll go, well... Or failing that, perhaps after we put some power into it and heat it up, it will crack and then reveal itself to us. Um, but at any rate, I'm going to go for power injection. So let's get wired up for that. So to inject power, I'm going to put two jumper leads onto the board. Uh, I like to solder my jumper leads on as it just means that I can turn and move the board around. It's a bit easier when you're doing camera work like I am. So let's get this guy plugged in. I'm going to need a bit more heat because we're soldering onto a motherboard. We'll put one onto this screw point here and I'm going to inject power at that current sense resistor because that's a nice big point I can solder a big old wire to that's uh, not really at risk of damaging anything. Right, so now I have two jumper wires that have a direct short circuit between them. We're going to plumb a couple of amps into that, and whatever is the cause of that short circuit is going to get hot. And I'm going to use my FLIR thermal camera to track that down. So for those of you who haven't seen it, this is my thermal camera I use. This is an old FLIR 1, plugs into a mobile phone. Um, this isn't very good, if I'm honest. It's not very good for the task. This is supposed to be used for you know, plumbers and electricians for looking at fuse boards and stuff like that at hotspots. It's not very good at looking at electronics. 
Um, however, it is good enough. So people often ask what I'm using. This is what I use. However, this is not what I would recommend. So take that as you will. All right, let's turn on the power supply. We've dropped to 1.76 volts, which is a little on the high side, but you know, there is some resistance there. Oh, we've got a hot spot flaring up over here straight away. That's our guy putting three amps down there. What's that? Let's see, our alignment. Is it one of those diodes? I think it might be. I'm just going to have a look on the other side of the board. It's either one of the diodes or it's one of those capacitors. It's one of the capacitors. Let's get the microscope over there and have a look with the old alcohol to confirm it. There we go. It's the middle one because that's the one that immediately dries out and that looks like it's got a crack in it. Yeah, that might be a crack. However, that's indisputable. If I pull some alcohol across that, you can see the middle one dries out immediately. The other two stay wet. Power off. So this is our guy here. I've just put a little black mark on top of it with a marker pen just so I don't forget which one it is. So what is this? Well, uh, these are the CPU VRMs. So these are feeding power into CPU V core up here. Um, and these capacitors will be bulk input capacitants. So um, these are probably DR MOSFETs or are just they're MOSFETs for all intent and purpose. Uh, these MOSFETs will be taking power from the main power rail um, and they will be stepping it down through these buck regulators into the CPU. And these capacitors are there um, to provide stability because every time one of those MOSFETs switches on, it takes a gulp of power out of the rail. So it needs a bunch of capacitors at the input. So if the power rail is struggling, as soon as that MOSFET cuts in and just sucks in power, there's just a bank of capacitors right next door for it to pull power out of while the main power rail catches up. Because the main power rail is big and slow. It's got a lot of energy in it. But when you pull on it, it's like pulling on a rope and there's some stretch in the rope before everything follows through. So by having a bit of some capacitors right next door, there's some power just immediately there. And then the main power rail is going to keep those capacitors topped up as it goes. So uh, one of those MOSFETs has gone bang. There's probably a, re a lot of heat in this general area. So that's probably just heat fatigue. Um, either way, we can pull that out. Uh, how, what the rating of that capacitor is, well, I can have a look and see if I've got a schematic for this board, but also what I can do is I can just pull off the nearby capacitors and measure those as well, which is what I'll do. My guess is that these are going to be 10 microfarad capacitors. They might be 22s, um, because this is quite a big, that's, um, this is a big power, uh, VRM here, so there might be 22 mics, but there'll be 10 or 22. Anyway. Uh, let's get under the microscope and get some of those off with the hot air. Right, let's get some flux and some hot air in there. I'm running at 120 degrees indicated, about 70% airflow. There's going to be um, a lot of power planes and grounding in this area. So this is going to be a bit tricky. Try and blow the flux onto the capacitors. Oh, these tweezers are a bit bent. Should have got the nice ones out. Also, I'm going to turn this sideways so then I can grip the capacitor by the side and not by the and not by the uh, solder. 
Let up. Oops, there we go, there's one. Come on, I don't want this uh don't want this MOSFET to move. That's a bad pad, I saw that. Uh, that was a little bit more dramatic than I would like. However, there we go. All right, well, that's a heckin' resistor, so that capacitor is dead. Right, I've just soldered um, the known good onto my transistor tester, which is telling me that that is a 10 microfarad capacitor. Um, so this is a DIY transistor tester. Um, you can put components into the socket or solder them onto these SMD pads and it will tell you what they are. Um, I don't show this guy off very often. It's very handy to have. Um, so yeah, um, I can check capacitance from the multimeter, but it's just a bit less jank than that. Good. All right. 10 microfarads it is. Right. Let's remove my jumper wires. And we'll reflow these pads. I'm worried that one of them is going to come off. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't, because this entire big pad here is huge. So we can just put in, we can just make another pad, basically. By extension, I'll be surprised if it comes off. Yeah, not sure what's going on there. However, it's fine. And now we've got three shiny new capacitors. We'll just get them roughly lined up. Everything has become nice and sticky, so it won't come off of the tweezers. Get all my caps in a row. All right, there we go. I'll put some more flux down there for good measure. Whoop, that'll do. Right, now I'm going to bring my airflow down to about 50% so I don't blow everything away. And let's flow those into place. No, don't turn. You guys can split up. You can't be together. I mean, you can. It actually doesn't matter. It would just be nicer if you would split up. Heck, don't do it. Just trying to go for a neat finish now. They're already on. There we go. There we go. Right, I'll spray some alcohol now on that, wash off the flux. There we go, and there's some shiny new capacitors on there. So once again, I'm gonna do some short checking just to make sure we're all good. 
make sure that none of the new capacitors are faulty or anything like that. So we'll we'll check the caps themselves. We should find ground on one side. There's ground, and the other side should be high resistance. Yeah, kilo ohms and rising. So the resistance is rising because the multimeter is charging up those capacitors. It's passing a small amount of voltage through the probes, which is charging the caps. And as they charge, their resistance increases. So when you see slowly increasing resistance like that, that's probably capacitors charging up. And let's go over and check our battery charger because this was also um, shorted earlier on. So we know it's going to be fine now, but we'll check it again just for posterity. And as you can see, that's now got 17 meg ohms on it. And drooping as just stuff settles. Lots of, lots of resistance. It's all good. Right. Let's put this thing back into a laptop and it should turn on. Right. I think we're ready to go. There's a big old hole in the laptop here, which is where a two and a half inch drive would go if it had one. But we've got an M.2 SSD in here instead. Uh, all other plugs and connectors have something plugged or connected to them. So I think we're ready for a test run. Uh, one last item of business. I'm just going to quickly just tweak these hinge screws just to make sure they're all good. Because they're the first things to go on most laptops. Good. And now I'm just going to very gingerly open this up. Now because I don't have the back cover on, I don't want to wrench it open. Um, so I'm just going to ease my fingers down the sides of the laptops there so I can open the hinges from the base of the hinges. <sighs> HP. Right, now we'll plug a charger into the side of it. We have a light on the charger. Can we see that on the camera? There we go. There's our light on the charger. And if I push the power button, we have fan spin. We have a power light. And it's probably going to sulk for a bit before it actually posts. High fan speed at the moment. All right, I think it just power cycled. Yep, it's power cycled. Probably RAM training. Oh, there we go. There is a picture. It's very dim. But the CMOS checksum is invalid. That's fine. I don't care about that. Enter. Accept and reboot. So one more power cycle. We should get normal fan speeds now. There we go. And there is our Windows loading screen. And we're booted into Windows. So let's get the back cover and the screws put on. And that is one fixed laptop with a cat background that looks like me at five in the morning when the sun starts coming up. Uh, anyway, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, thank you as always to all of my supporters, the Patreon crew, the um, Discord crowd, the Twitch crowd, everyone and everyone. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.